Well, cool. Thanks again for everybody jumping on. Um, today, I kind of gave a brief overview, but today we're um, talking about materials and resources or design for resources. Um, like I said, the three that AIA Grand Rapids has outlined is design for water, design for energy, and design for resources. Because um, those are the three that we really want people to report for um, uh, AIA awards, uh, project awards. And um, I think the most recent um, call for entries actually only asked for two, two of the entries, but these are the three that we've identified. So you can pick any two of the three um, to submit for AIA awards. Um, so yeah, again, today we're gonna talk about design for resources. Or really this is a kind of a big growing topic around um, around embodied carbon. Um, I feel like originally uh, sustainability was very much about um, process energy, um, energy modeling, that sort of thing. And the conversation has really switched to um, CO2 and embodied energy, or I wouldn't say necessarily switched, but has um, expanded to talk more about um, embodied energy, which, which is a great topic. Um, it's kind of the other, other side of the coin in terms of energy use within the building, as we all know. So, um, you know, why is it important? Um, it's definitely a huge um, piece, like I said, of the AE industry and the building and construction uh, industry. Um, global uh, building floor area is expected to double by uh, 2060. So there's a lot of um, embodied energy that's going to go into buildings within the next, you know, 50, 60 years. Um, it's, there's, there's a lot to think about, a lot to design for. And um, I think it's important that we have the awareness for this because um, uh, the building sector definitely uh, contributes a lot to the annual CO2 emissions. And so um, when you think about just what all is um, captured within a building. Um, concrete, steel, and aluminum are probably the worst contributors, concrete probably being the worst overall um, to CO2 emissions, um, uh, making up for almost a, a quarter of uh, CO2 emissions um, within the building industry. So it's, it's definitely a hot topic, something that we need to think about for design for the future. And when you think about the lifespan of a building, um, while we have, um, you know, annual uh, operational carbon, we also have that upfront carbon. And um, how are we trying to offset that with maybe a more high performance design? Um, obviously that's gonna help offset that initial uh, embodied carbon faster than it would, um, uh, a building that is, you know, has a standard performance. Um, and then of course, trying to think down, down the road, if the building, you know, makes it to 30 years, you know, every, you know, maybe 15 years, you're actually doing some sort of renovation or update or change. So there's, um, some embodied carbon associated with that. So it's important to look at it, uh, uh, from a, uh, lifespan, but also from the full picture of operational versus embodied carbon. So um, one thing just to, you know, be aware of quick is uh, through the AIA submission, they're going to ask for the total uh, CO2 equivalent, um, which is just pounds of CO2. Um, there's a couple um, softwares, one that's free that I'll talk about that um, will help you kind of get there and uh, figure out um, overall life cycle analysis and total um, CO2 um, embodied energy. So, um, but that, this is the metric that they'll, they'll want and ask for. Um, and really this is, we're, we're talking about the, the whole life cycle analysis. And uh, primarily we kind of look at uh, the product and construction process, which is, you know, A1 to A5. Um, but a lot of these materials, as you'll see, um, when you start diving into carbon um, or life cycle analysis, 
Um, there's a lot more actually to unpack with, you know, the, the B stage and then of course the C stage, how that product is, you know, being disposed of and hopefully potentially recycled and reused, you know, cradle to gr uh, cradle to cradle, hopefully. But um, this is kind of the overall process of uh, what that life cycle analysis looks like and then how it's broken down um, over the various stages within the life of the material. Um, and so just to give Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we got you now. Awesome. Yeah, so um, just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like um, from, I don't know if you guys use Tally or if you've ever used Tally, this is kind of an output from Tally that um, talks about um, the different uh, impacts to um, impacts to the environment beyond maybe CO2. So uh, you have acidification potential, eutrophication potential, global warming potential, kind of all the other um, uh, impacts to the environment that are critical um, based upon the materials that are used. And it gives you kind of a nice breakdown. Um, so you can start to see um, how that breakdown relates to uh, the material, which then relates to the overall carbon um, or life cycle analysis process, um, which is helpful, but you can kind of start to see how those actually impact. So um, the reds have to do with that initial A1 process, um, A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And those you can kind of see are the bulk of the um, impact to the life cycle analysis or impact to the environment. Whereas the A4, while still important, um, and the B and C stages have a little bit less of an impact. So it's important, again, to be aware of that first stage, the you know, A1 through A5, which is really about the raw materials and, and construction, because that's going to have the most impact on the environment and the most impact on these uh, metrics, as well as carbon. So that's kind of a nice break down uh, visual graphic representation of um, life cycle analysis and embodied energy. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple pretty good tools out there right now. Tally is probably the gold standard, uh, Tally and Cove tool there on the right. Um, they do a wonderful job of kind of breaking down and giving graphic representation of, uh, of a life cycle analysis. There's also Tally Cat which is free. Um, I've used it. It's a little, it's a little clunky, but um, it gets the job done. Um, and people like it, of course, because it's free. Um, and, you know, an architect can do it. Um, but yeah, the, uh, Tally is definitely one of the best softwares that I've used. It's really easy. Fortunately, it is kind of um, expensive. And then, yeah, um, Cove Tool has started to roll out their embodied energy piece. I just saw that um, Robert Downey Jr. has a footprint coalition that actually started to invest in uh, Cove Tools embodied energy metrics and, and tools. Um, so that's kind of cool um, to see. So uh, that, that kind of concludes the overall um, talk about uh, embodied energy. Um, kind of want to just open it up. Um, and uh, see if you guys have any questions or I guess what you're seeing in the in the um, in the industry or maybe sharing any any lessons learned that you've had on projects so far. I know our firm is definitely trying to start to track um, embodied energy. Um, we definitely track operational energy, um, especially on uh, bigger projects, but we're, we're in the process of trying to track it on all projects. And then um, embodied energy, we just, we feel is so important just because we do so many build out projects, um, interior only, that um, it just makes sense to, to have that knowledge and understand how to um, 
make changes or selections in materials that make more sense um, that are better for better for the environment. Yeah, from from my perspective, um, I'd found these uh, webinars a little bit ago and just wanting to learn more. So I joined the webinars. Um, so I'm kind of learning as I'm going to see. Uh, I know um, in office, I don't think we honestly do too much of calculating or keeping track of embodied energy or um, kind of carbon for the, the projects and stuff. So um, I'm curious um, of the different softwares to to jump into and see um, kind of what's easiest to use or grab maybe TallyCat just to start because it's free and try it out on my own. Um, I know from a previous webinar, you guys had that chart of ease of use versus detailed analysis <clears throat> going from Honeybee to Open Studio, um, I think Sapphira, Cove Tool, uh, and Autodesk Insight. Uh, so I know there's a um, pile of them out there that to use some are easier than others and um yeah I'm, I'm interested in the ease of use of those and how uh robust or how accurate um assuming it's a revit model needs to be to to output um usable results versus you know a typical four inch wall which is just a, a gray gray mass wall versus you know being detailed of having every bit and piece yeah built into the model to then get you know put garbage in get garbage out kind of thing right yeah um, so yeah it's from my own perspective of just seeing digging into that um so yeah any any pointers for that would be good or um i know like i said you guys have discussed it previously um but yeah yeah no it's a good question um so yeah tally cat i've just recently been using it's it's not bad um i've used the other tally software um and that works a lot better but tally cat is obviously free um it does a good job you can you can use it with revit um you can export models um what gets a little complicated is applying the um, materials to the exported um, items. So like if you export a wall, um, trying to figure out and like apply the materials is a little difficult um, in my perspective. Um, it's not like once you get the hang of it, you can kind of start going through it. But again, I mean, that's that's the issue with a lot of the embodied energy softwares is trying to get the export to line up with um, the library because essentially you have to pull from this massive library of carbon um, data and then apply it to the material somehow and then you know multiply that by you know cubic um, inches or cubic feet what have you um, to get like your overall carbon use is kind of how that breaks down um, so some of those just do it much better again tally cat's not bad and it's free like it's a good one to to work through um, Tally, um, the actual software was developed by Karen Timberlake and that, Karen, that is a fantastic software. I, um, you can download, a, I think you can still download a, um, free version of it, like a, a quick, um, like seven day trial or something like that but it's a pretty robust software and it gives you really awesome graphics like ones that you don't necessarily have to um you know rework to put in front of a client whereas like with tallycat it just gives you like a a csv which you have to upload into um you know excel and you know kind of make it pretty which isn't a big deal but like Callie comes out with these awesome like imagery and that's what I was kind of like showing you guys. So I feel like that that's like really valuable. I forget how much, yeah, how much Tally actually costs because we don't own it. It is good that you, you pointed out like graphically that 
um, what you get from it. That would kind of be, from my perspective, like built into the price of it. Yeah. Where you're not paying to wrestle with the software to then try to pretty it up later. You can, um, right. you know, whatever it spits out, generally you can kind of use. Um, so that's pretty good to know. Let's see how much it costs. Yeah, so you can do a free trial um, and kind of play around with it and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. Yeah, that one works really, really well. Um, I think you also asked about, have you been looking at uh, energy modeling software as well? Uh, yeah, so that that um, I grabbed a screenshot of that before. Oh, awesome! Um, haven't had a, a minute to to dig into it, but yeah, that's what. I'm like, okay, this is. Um, I've heard of Cove Tool before, and I've seen um, Autodesk Insight um, around online. So I wasn't entirely sure, but it's good to know um, through previous discussions what others are using or what. You know, it took us a while to get used to this, but now it's it works really well. Or, um, yeah, just how to approach it. So. Yeah, I mean, Cove Tool, I know a lot of um, architecture firms that use Cove Tool. Um, and uh, from what I've heard, it's a really good uh, product. And now that they have the embodied energy portion, um, I think it's even, even more robust. Um, what's really nice about Cove Tool, too, like I was talking about with Tally, is you get some of those really nice um, graphics. So you know, daylight analysis and some of those things, which are like clients love that stuff. And um, I mean, we do too. I mean, it's nice to see uh, a simple uh, pie chart broken down so you can kind of understand it. So yeah, Cove Tool is another really good one. Um, we use uh, Sapphira in-house. Um, and I I found that to be a fantastic software because it um, it allows you to do like really good early stage um, energy modeling in like SketchUp and Revit, and you can do it on the go, so it's really quick and iterative, um, which I find um, helpful. Um, I'm sure Cove Two also has uh, those same types of um, types of iterative tools as well. So, but yeah, that's the graphics I feel like are definitely an important piece of it. And this one here you said works for both SketchUp and for Revit? Uh, yes, yep. And um, yeah, I think both Cove Tool, both Cove Tool and Sapphira both work for Revit. Um, Autodesk Insight, it obviously works for Revit. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest of these either work off of like uh, SketchUp or um, uh, Grasshopper and Honeybee work off like Rhino, like kind of right third party almost uh, softwares. So if you guys, I don't um, think you guys do any um, residential work. Is that correct? We do some. Um, do some. yeah and it's a little more rare but yeah b opt um is an awesome software i don't think i yeah i don't have it loaded on this computer otherwise i would open open it up um but b opt's a really good energy modeling software for residential use that's kind of what nrel um uh designed it for and it's kind of like <laughs> It's like a Windows 98 version of maybe <laughs> Sapphire or Cove tool, <laughs> but like you just, you move the sliders and kind of tell it what um, levels of insulation you want, um, how much like uh, window to wall ratio you want, those types of things. And you can get a pretty, pretty good idea of, um, you know, what the energy is going to look like very quickly. Um, I actually used this on a passive house project one time and it was, it was pretty close on passive house. You actually have to do compliance modeling. So you use like 
um, Passive House's proprietary software, which is called Woofy. And it's like super detailed. You basically either have to hire somebody who already knows how to use it, or you have to buy their software, which is kind of silly, but um, the opt got relatively close within a few KBTUs, which is, which is always good. So great questions. Would it, um, I mean, would it be helpful to share um, like software tools um, with the group? Like if we were to continue with these framework Fridays and like focus on an energy modeling tool or like a embodied carbon tool. Would that sound I think it'd interesting? Be, it'd be beneficial. Yeah. But like, um, like I said before, I was kind of getting into it. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not sure the interest in office specifically, but just for my own interest, yeah, just learning what's out there and, um, I don't know if like we already have access to Autodesk Insight, if that'd be worth downloading and playing around with. Um, but I think, um, like you said, some other programs you and others have used just um, going through the motions or having a, a project, um, if you're willing to share, you know, to step through that or um, develop a basic project for that software just to see. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm curious on that. Yeah, I think that'd be a good suggestion. Yes, and I would second some of that as well. I don't know. There's a whole lot of push for that here right now. Um, and I have also used Autodesk Insight in the past a little bit, and I've heard of a couple of these others like Coke Tool, um, but definitely seen an application of that I think would be useful. Yeah, I think we could definitely do that. Um, I it's interesting like what everybody gravitates to during these discussions um pro like project examples and uh like the software seem to be like the two biggest things that everybody is really interested in so we've kind of we've we've tried to share as much as we can with that so yeah maybe we'll just um take a deep dive into software and and talk about it through the lens of like certain projects yeah and i think part of that too is like seeing the benefit of it allows yeah. for like an easier grasp of it and then you can start applying the thinking behind it to other situations and projects rather than trying to kind of do that in reverse trying to right. understand it all and then not necessarily know what you're doing as far as how to apply that at least speaking personally yeah no i it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I kind of gather from the um, previous webinars, it's more of outlining, okay, this is what um, you should do or could do, uh, you know, take these steps or uh, more informational. Um, but yeah, like you said, Sean, maybe moving forward, it's more not necessarily what to do, but how to do it, um, you know, looking at the, the softwares. And then for people that are um, somewhat newer to this with say Brian and I, have, then we could really look into, okay, Cove tool does this great, say lighting analysis, which could be very beneficial. Or um, if you really, you know, fall into the rabbit hole of calculating um, more hard numbers on embodied energy and um, carbon and stuff, or if it's uh, more professionally, just, Hey, you know, like a, lighting analysis or something, um, analyzing forms or something is more beneficial immediately. Um, just kind of weighing those back and forth of usability. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, kind of like, almost like uh, design, design process rules of thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, we've rent, we've, uh, mentioned, uh, ASHRAE 209 quite a bit recently. Um, that's kind of the newest, uh, energy modeling ASHRAE code 
um, that's come out. I, it probably won't be adopted anytime soon, but um, they've kind of laid out a process for compliance energy modeling, um, which is interesting. And they even talk about like, um, you know, schematic design, design development, and then each of those. So we could even kind of pair that up with ASHRAE and, and talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I can see that um, being helpful because it's always a always a reference of oh well they they suggest this or we need to do this because of that. Um, so yeah, kind of running that side by side of this is why we're doing this or because they're um, outlining this to take this step. Cool. Well, do you guys have any other questions? I, I really appreciate the feedback. I'll um, share that with the rest of the, the COAT group. Um, and, uh, and hopefully we can maybe roll out some more sessions about, you know, the how to with the software and everything. Yes, thank you. I think that would be really helpful, especially yeah. just kind of getting into it, like Matt had said. Definitely. Yeah, I don't have any other um, questions or comments right now. Um, yeah, just kind of getting my head around things and um, being, seeing what the tools could do um, and then kind of pursuing things from there would be, be great. Definitely. Well, thanks guys for jumping on. Um, happy Friday. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, you too. <laughs> really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll see you guys maybe in two weeks. For sure. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You yeah. as well. Thanks, you too. All righty. See ya.